and welcome to the very first episode of GeoTV, where we bring you the latest updates from the world of geothermal energy. Today we're going to dive straight into the heart of Africa, where things are heating up in the world of geothermal. With nearly 985 megawatts installed by the end of 2023, Kenya is on the verge of joining the so-called One Gigawatt Club together with Philippines, Indonesia, the US, Turkey and New Zealand. But what's the secret sauce behind the success of geothermal in Kenya? We're about to find out from representatives from GDC and Kenya. We are moving uh, right now, we are in the fourth industrial uh, revolution right now. And in the geothermal space, we have not been left behind. Our geothermal power plants are highly automated, and we use technology in all spheres. Coming down from exploration, we have uh, different software to get to analysis and visualize, to go into the power plants where we monitor and control, and then we use the data later on to make informed decisions about how our plants are running, how the equipment is running, and going forward, hoping to utilize also artificial intelligence for maintenance processes that we have. Kenya is also set to host the Geothermal Congress in July. But what can participants expect from this event? Let's hear it straight from the Geothermal Association of Kenya. I want to take this opportunity to urge all of you around the world to come and attend the Kenya Geothermal Congress 2024. It will be running from the 15th of July of this year starting with a training day and then going into a three-day congress. This congress will be headlined by all the people who have a part of the Kenya, in the East African region, and across the world. We are bringing the world to Kenya to talk about clean energy, which is such a vital topic at this point in status of where we are the energy mix this country and open this congress will involve discussions about policy it will involve discussions about finance and it will involve discussions about technology if you have an interest to participate please go online search for the kenya japan congress 2024 click on the link and feel free to register we look forward to welcoming you all to Kenya in July for successful progress. Thank you. Policy. Sounds boring to you? Well, think again, because policy is what's shaping our future and our industry right now. And we need to stay on top. That's why we asked our experts to tell us about what are the wins and the losses right now. Geothermal, like all renewable technologies, is a policy-driven market. In a policy-driven market, politics is king. For the very first time, the politics around geothermal energy were laid bare through the European Parliament's own initiative report on geothermal. This, this report examined the regulatory bottlenecks that need to be addressed um, to allow geothermal to grow, but more importantly, it demonstrated that there's widespread support across the political spectrum for geothermal as a critical part of Europe's decarbonisation pathway. Members of the European Parliament, MEPs for short, came out uh, strongly favouring geothermal, sometimes because it's available locally, sometimes because it's the chosen uh, solution for our rural and agricultural communities, our industries, but every single time it was because geothermal is Europe's energy, the same way it's every local locality's energy. The next step is for the European Commission to pick up the baton and produce a detailed action plan to allow private capital to crowd into the sector and to make it much easier for project developers, local governments, industry, agricultural communities to invest in geothermal. For the very first time, we're getting closer and closer to realising the geothermal decade. This is a beautiful time to be. 
Hello everyone, my name is Mara Blomar and I am the CEO of the International Geothermal Association. And I was asked to give a couple of wins that we see in the world of policies. And I have two for you. One is Colombia, who have recently, and actually last month, um, released the latest and greatest legal and regulatory framework for high entropy geothermal projects. And the second win I would really like to share with you is Indonesia, where the Ministry of Energy and Mines have released, or is soon to be released, massive journal on all the license areas that Indonesia currently has open for the international community to invest in. And it shows data, resources, the policies and the regulation that are needed to get the job done. Why is this important? We can't grow geothermal if we don't have that political buy-in and the right policies, the investment climate around the regulatory frameworks. So those two wins are of today, but they will ensure that we will see geothermal grow. There has been momentum on reforming the arduous and fraught geothermal permitting process in the United States through a categorical exclusion congressionally authorized also known as a CADEX or CX for geothermal exploration. Right now, geothermal developers experience six to eight year delays because of redundant environmental impact statements and environmental assessments required by a federal law known as the National Environmental Protection Act or NEPA. The, and also geothermal projects can go through up to six full and redundant NEPA reviews. So there, are, there are several bipartisan bills in both the House and the Senate that seek to streamline this process for geothermal exploration. Full NEPA reviews would still be required for once the geothermal exploration phase is completed and the geothermal resource confirmed. Additionally, the Bureau of Land Management, or BLM, which manages 247 million acres in the United States, is responsible for administering important parts of the NEPA permitting process. BLM has released a, an administrative CADEX for geothermal exploration, an effort that has been 20 years in the making. The BLM administrative CADEX is modeled after two existing geothermal CADEXs, one for geothermal activities on U.S. Navy lands and one for geothermal activities on U.S. Forest Service lands. Geothermal Rising applauds BLM for recognizing the critical need to grant an administrative geothermal exploration CADEX. Even with this administrative rule change, GR and the geothermal community continue to encourage Congress to move forward with a legislative, congressionally mandated CADEX that statutorily emboldens BLM to support and the exploration of geothermal resources that are vital to stabilizing the electrical grid, decarbonizing the built environment, and that offer oil and gas workers an opportunity to transition into the clean energy economy. Additionally, GR is supporting efforts to streamline geothermal drilling depth limitations in states such as New York and Connecticut, promoting thermal energy network legislation in Washington State, New Mexico, and Pennsylvania, and GR supporting efforts to clarify geothermal subsurface ownership in Idaho, as has been done in Texas. These policy changes have deep and lasting impacts that will scale geothermal development, the clean and renewable energy with the smallest environmental footprint and the lowest life cycle carbon impact of all energy generation technologies. And it is through our important policy work that GR's vision can be achieved to use the earth to save the earth and to create a brighter future for earth and all its inhabitants. So thanks for listening today and see you at another geothermal event soon. Fascinating insights from the world of geothermal policy and lobbying. Now, let's turn our attention to Think Geo Energy and the latest and the greatest news on what's making waves in the geothermal world. The geothermal energy market is expanding rapidly and we see a lot of new technologies and regions entering geothermal energy development. And one story in particular has been really interesting. That is a research well being drilled by Taka Geothermal on the site of the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology in Saudi Arabia, a well drilled for cooling with geothermal energy. Is this uh, cooling solution is a success? Then uh, we know that about 50% of the energy use of Saudi is cooling, and that we are talking about a market of 40 million people. So you can just imagine how enormous opportunity is there. When looking for potential sites for geothermal development, knowledge about resources is absolutely crucial. So a new one-of-a-kind tool called GeoMap developed by Project Innerspace and Google to provide a prospecting tool for geothermal developers and investors. 
Geothermal energy is not only used for power generation, but it also can be used directly for all kinds of applications like cooling and heating, etc. And one of the regions that is exploring the direct use of geothermal energy is East Africa. And with the support of the Geothermal Risk Mitigation Facility by German development KFW, direct use projects in East Africa are being supported by funding and grants. Yeah, well, GMF uh, started 2012 and it was uh, always created from the very beginning to be a program as an incentive for the market development for geothermal power and uh, lately also heat in East Africa because the, the market was rather underdeveloped at that time and so the idea came together to have a risk mitigation facility to exactly foster that development of these projects. Okay, so recently there was this news of uh, grants mm -hmm. awarded for the GRMP program. Um, what, what is what is in the future for this program? Well, um, well, first of all, um, how GMF worked, it, it's grant-based, so it's really um, paying out grants right right the way, and it's uh, a share of 80% for surface studies uh, for heat and for power project, and it's up to 40% currently for the power projects uh, for the drilling programs, up to three full-size wells, and also some infrastructure and uh, continuation premiums. And, um, well, and what, I, what you're referring to, of course, is now that we just concluded the first application round for heat, and there are uh, five projects qualified with their surface studies. These surface studies also in include uh, feasibility studies because we really want to have a look at also at the financials and the, the way these projects uh, are planning to, let's say, lift up to and, and uh, um, how, how they get it done also from a financial point of view. Another often overlooked region for geothermal development are the Caribbean islands. And with a lot of development hopes not materializing in the past few years, it is fantastic to see the recently signed power purchase agreement between Ormat and the island of Guadeloupe. So uh, things will hopefully wake up again in the region. Since the acquisition of the Geothermie Bouillante in 2016 by the Ormat Group, uh, we always had our eyes on extending that uh, geothermal power plant because we knew that the reservoir can sustain a higher generation. Uh, the negotiation with EDF and the regulator were a little bit long, but uh, very fruitful. That is mainly because it's France's almost only geothermal power plant, and it posed uh, several uh, challenges from a regulatory uh, perspective. Now we are really proud to be part of uh, Guadeloupe Energy Independence and uh, achieving a goal of uh, net zero in the near future. New technologies, new regions, new projects and financing and more. Groundbreaking things are happening in geothermal, so stay tuned with GeoTV. Now let's dive into our next segment. Let's talk about financing and how we can be more successful in our industry. And we should not only talk and ask ourselves, we should actually ask from outside. And that's exactly what we did. Check it out. We also sat down with investment expert Alexander Helling to look into how he does his pitch and how he is using the knowledge that he has in order to make sure that the investments get in the right place at the right time. Check it out. Well, there's no easy formula for success. You need to understand the investor's perspective and what their request for return is. And for some investors that are looking to invest debt, for example, they focus much more on risk. So if that's the type of investor that you want to bring in, you have to understand the full risk profile and also what that investor is looking for. If it's more on an equity investor, they look more on their return profile. And then you have to see what's the potential upside. Is there a maximum upside or is there an unlimited upside? And that will determine what type of investors you go to. So by understanding what the investors that you want to bring in, what they are looking for, and then you know, combine that with what you have to offer. That's my best advice you know, to find the right investor into your company. 
it's not about a company pitch or an individual pitch. It's actually about what we can do as an industry to get better at get investments. So we actually asked the IGA and see what can we do as an industry to improve. So in our opinion from IGA approach, the innovation is the key factor of convincing investor developer to support the geothermal development to be in the line with the energy transition uh, in future. So investment, development, innovation are the key aspects of the supporting from, to get the supporting from the financial. Now, let's turn to a real life story that showcases the power of collaboration. The Philippines boasts nearly two gigawatts of installed geothermal capacity and EDC stands for nearly 61% of this. This makes them the second largest energy producer in the world. Their impact? Lighting up one of every 11th light bulb in the country. Did you know that the demand for electricity is expected to triple by 2050? But what truly drives this transformation? We turned directly to the heat and sat down with President and CEO Jerome Kinglet of EDC. Well, I think we can take a look first at the history of no. the Philippines. Um, we don't really have a rich um, fossil fuel uh, re resource. And back, I think, in the 70s when we were um, where we, we were having to deal with the uh, oil crisis. Mm. The government at that time said we have to be able to find a way to uh, rely less on fossil fuel. And that uh, is what has driven the development of, of geothermal in the Philippines. So energy independence. Energy independence and security. Okay. And I think that, has, um, um, that is what has made us um, one of the biggest um, uh, geothermal um, resource exploiting um, country in the world. I mean, EDC as an integrated power and uh, geothermal operation is number one as a, com as a company. But in terms of resources only, I think you're right, we're probably third or, or fourth worldwide. Hopefully, um, what's happening now is that when people became uh, more conscious of RE, they started focusing on solar and wind and hydro. But slowly we've been able to emphasize that actually if you're looking at the best of the best in terms of RE. It's geothermal that you should be focusing on. Because unlike solar where you would stop production when there's no sun, wind where you would stop production when there's no wind, hydro where you would stop production when there's no water or limited flow, mm. geothermal would actually be able to produce electricity on a 24-7 basis. Mm. Thank you, Jerome, for sharing your insights with us. The future is green and EDC is truly leading the change. Make sure to join us next time for more news within the world of geothermal energy. Until then, I'm Gabriela, signing off for GeoTV. And remember, the Earth has power. Let's switch it on.